And today I wanted to talk to you about, uh, well, give you some takeaway tips, uh, mainly about design and uh, um, how to get the most out of uh, design professionals and, and, and consultancy. Um, so, um, I have a little bit of an intro here. Um, so you may be a young, um, prof a, a young developer or you may be experienced, you may have um, under your, you know, um, um, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of development that you've done, or you may be starting. Um, whichever way we see it, you are of a, we call it of a breed, <laughs> of a kind of people. And I don't know if you know, but you are uh, the 3% in the population uh, in this particular aspect. Um, does anyone know what that could be? I don't expect an answer. I'll tell you what it is. Um, you are. Uh, the, um, in, in the, the creative risk takers by nature. So you are uh, entrepreneurs, but you are people that um, statistically you are uh, more, more risk takers than, than most people. So you see opportunity uh, that other people don't see. Um, so is that fair? Do you think you yes. agree? Yeah, yeah. you feel represented. Um, uh, I'm not a developer, so I can tell that, you know, I can tell the difference. So, um, so basically, that actually I always found that very, very interesting. Um, and um, this, this presentation is going to be, it, it's a longer presentation, so I'm going to skip some uh, slides, but I hope I can give you as much as I can uh, from our perspective as architects, how we, we work and how we can be of better service to you, really. Um, so here is, um, I'm going to talk about most of my clients, developers, uh, they are in that 3% and they are very good at identifying exclusive new location, disclosing full urban potentials of sites, they see it, they, they see that. Uh, they also have realistic but yet aspirational, contemporary, luxury views of what they can achieve. I mean, who wouldn't like to be able to do that and sell it or rent it? Um, and um, they see the potential, um, and they also have got worries, lots of them. Uh, and when they come to us, a, a lot of the time, they got this view of what they want to achieve, but they also got a whole lot of worries um, that they not always um, openly tell us, but we can, we can read through sometimes. Um, so um, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, and, and, and that, um, you know, uh, we, we can uh, certainly help uh, with design, uh, you know, not on everything, but in, in a lot of, of what this, this comes, you know, with. For example, over or underestimating the site development scheme potential, um, both are bad, so, you know, those are very important that we, we uh, understand if there's a worry there. Not feeling prioritized with by the design consultant. A lot of people that come to us, we're a very approachable firm, so a lot of people that come to us say, Oh, you actually listen. <laughs> you actually um, understand what we're telling you, what the, you know. Um, so a lot of them have had a bad experience with a design consultant, or, or, or they haven't, and they don't know uh, what to tell us. Um, not being in control of the design process, some people find that design is a word that, what does it mean? You know, what I mean, expect from the design because I pay this fee, usually a high fee, what I'm going to expect. So not being in control of what they pay for. Uh, getting stuck through planning, luckily we've got good planning consultants um, that we work with uh, and we also, you know, uh, are able to, to give some, some, some guidance as well. So getting stuck through planning is a big worry. Or who can relate to that? <laughs> Going over budget, worry, you know, uh, you know, the time time and budget uh, are, are usually two of the big worries. So, another one is the wrong internal layout. I couldn't achieve what I wanted to achieve. The architect gave me a plan. I couldn't, uh, 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 uh. So, you know, they come with this kind of worry as well. Or finishing something and not being able to sell it. Um, so, sitting there, and I hear, hear the stories about, you know, having to pay back, you know, when you borrow for your developments and, and not being able to, to pay it back in time. 
and the burden that that brings. So um, I'm here to say it doesn't need to be that way, yes, and I've said that before. How do uh, we support uh, our developers, the ones that work with us, and lots of other architects do the same. Uh, we're not unique in that, but you know, we, we try our best. Um, we, we, uh, we work with people, uh, we're going to skip a few because I have a lot of the time to give you all this stuff, sorry. Um, we, um, we talk about adding value uh, and design, design opportunities, how we add value. And the way that we feel we, we add value um, is not just in a, in a, you know, in, in, at the beginning or the end or in the middle, it can be spread over, over, over a project and it should be spread over the project. So what we say is that the site is a site analysis portion, the building is when we are developing the building design, and the layout is what's happening internally, not just the fabric of the building, but actually internally what happens to the building. So what we say um, with the site analysis, for example, we say our clients receive from a pre-feasibility or a full feasibility study, a full understanding of the, of the site potential. We think that that is key at the early stages. We will work with the planning consultant, uh, looking at what the, the scope is in terms of, of, of policy and what is, what is possible, but also we like to stretch, you know, and, and, and be able to give uh, that sort of afterthought, uh, you know, and, and, and what else, and what else, and what else. So that, I think, from a design consultant, it's important that you get that, that you get that additional input, um, not just what makes sense, what's, you know, that anyone else can, can see. Um, the other thing is, on, on the building itself, we say our clients get to explore with us uh, distinctive features. Um, when we say features, is they can be expensive, but they can actually not be expensive. What makes a building uh, special or gives that wow, or makes it stand out, not always is an expensive feature. It's, it's got to be a well thought, well designed feature that sits with the environment where the building sits, but also gives you that uniqueness that, you know, the, you know as a developer will make you proud, I guess, to, to say, well, that, that building is mine. <laughs> you know, that's something that I came up with. And um, you see how probably, you know, uh, Manny and Romy talk about their building. They spend a lot of time looking at design features and how best um, to, 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 to make their buildings stand out. Um, and the same goes for the internal layout. Uh, again, you need to be able to um, get from your design uh, professional um, something that works internally as much as externally. I know you make it, you know, it's, it's basic stuff, but a lot of the time we see plans that actually don't reflect that, and then they're very difficult to, to make them work, uh, so you need to go over them uh, again. Um, and, and it is important that that is lo looked as a totality. Um, so, architects, we've got the training, that's the way our brains work. We can see things in 3D uh, very easily because that's our training. Well, I'm aware of all of that, but lots of other things, but that is our expertise. The, we, we, we are masters of space. Um, so that is what you know what you should expect from an architect, really. Apart from you know all the other things, parking, where we, we put our bins, uh, all the things that you know common sense that we need to, to understand, but that is 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 key. Um, we know the forecast, and I was going to hover on this a bit longer, but um, this is from Savills. We know that it's not uh, very, um, well, it's not great. It's a lot of rainers in the next five years, particularly in London, after London. Um, so what we uh, talk to our developer clients a lot of the time is about understanding exactly who their clients will be. Um, so are your clients people that are upsizing, downsizing, relocating, or are their investors? Um, and to share that with us. So my tip here is, if, if you're working with an design professional, don't hesitate to share what your market is. Um, because we will design in a very different way, depending on what, what your aspirations are for the site. Um, so tell, you know, be open about this. Um, I'm going to hover on this one a little longer, um, 
the other things I was talking with Manny about is about what we call the the cost time um, is cost time and quality triangle. It's very important that well you know that you can't have a hundred percent of the quality, the cost, and the time. Um, something has to give. So what I do with my developers, I, we tend to pinpoint whereabouts they want to be. Do they want the top quality, and we do want that in, in you know, record time, it's gonna cost them a bit more. Uh, do they want, you know, the time and, and, the, uh, and, the, and, and, the, and the price, the quality will, will suffer a bit. So we have to be realistic um, of where, whereabouts we are in the triangle. Um, and, and share, share the budget. Share as much as you can. Sometimes you won't know, but if you know, um, all that should inform your, your, uh, your designer. Um, this is the way we see space, and we do this automatically. This is not something that we need thinking about. Um, for most people, this would be difficult. This is what we do. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask, because we can give you this um, with the building, with the internal space. So just to sum up, we are Riva uh, ARB Architects. We have a very special offer for you today. Uh, I hope you don't mind me um, mm. bringing some, some oh, brochures. Yeah. Um, it is a, it's a pre-feasibility study that we normally uh, charge 350 pounds. We are opening it today only for this group for 150. It's for small developments. Um, and we work uh, in general with the small, medium and large um, option, so people can choose. Well, that, that doesn't mean the project has to be small, medium or large, it's the amount of input. Obviously, the pre-feasibility is the first step, uh, but it is something that we often uh, start with, with any developer anyway. And we follow what is the river plan of work, and that's the way we work, um, depending on where your project is, which is, uh, I could talk about that for three hours, but it won't be too so um, it's a very good way of working. Um, testimonials, you may know some people here. Um, Dr. Testimonials, thank you for listening to me and um, more testimonials. So come and talk to us. We're very approachable. We've got Lucette, uh, Katerina and Venetia here today. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Andrew.